Hi guys, this is Jango Sasson for Chess24. Due to recent events, I felt inspired to do a top 10 list of the biggest blunders ever committed in World Championship matches history. We are talking the beautiful game of chess, of course, and the recent events I have mentioned are the ongoing World Championship match between Vishiana and Magnus Carlsen, which saw a horrific blunder that will feature in this list. So the question was, who else has blundered as badly or worse in the history of World Championship matches? Let's get straight to it. On place number 10, we have none other than Robert James Fisher, arguably the most famous chess player in history, arguably the strongest chess player in history, in his match against Boris Spassky in 1972, Reykjavik. Highly followed match, I've been told. He lose the first game because of the inexplicable move bishop takes h2 in this position totally unnecessary a completely equal bishop ending he went for bishop takes h2 and after g3 this poor bishop could not make it out he tried h5 king e2 and h4 to free the way for his bishop but after king to f3 the poor guy remained trapped on h2 which really on this level is not a line that should be missed or that a Fisher would normally miss. It's a bit bizarre what went wrong there for him. If he wanted to prove that he can hold the game while giving up the bishop, which could actually be the case. He lost the game, but there have been some people claiming that it still is a draw. Not sure about that. It still qualifies as a big, big blunder because that bishop was gone shortly after king e7, king g2, and it's been lost. So we get Robert Fischer blundering his bishop. Then let's move on to number nine. We have another battle of two former world champions. Alexander Ayechin with the white pieces is playing the Dutch former world champion Max Ove. At the time of this match, I believe Ove was the reigning world champion. This is the rematch played in 1937 after Ayechin lost his title to Max Ove. He would win it back in this match. And one reason could be that his opponent made some mistakes, even though this one he did get away with. In the position we see on the board, Ove played the move queen to e5. Looks natural enough. The queen is removed from the attack, is itself attacking the knight on c3. But it allowed a little tactic that really should not be missed at this level. And here what makes it special is not only was it missed, but it was missed two moves in a row. Already worked here, white had the cute move queen h8 check, giving up the queen and after king takes h8, knight takes f7, double attack and knight fork. And after let's say king g8, knight takes e5, white has a much better ending. Bishop takes b4, knight takes d7, knight takes d7, knight to e4. And white is a healthy pawn up, has excellent winning chances. So he should have done this here. However, he did not see it. He went bishop b2. He was given another chance. Bishop c6. Now queen h8 would have been even stronger. Because after queen h8 here, takes, takes, king g8, knight takes e5. You don't even lose the pawn on b4 anymore. Because the bishop on c6 is under attack. So you would have to remove that bishop and white would remain two pawns up. However, this once again did not happen. White played a3, went after bishop d6. Finally, queen h8 was stopped because now the queen is defended and black had a very healthy position for his missing pawn with the weakened white king and the two bishops. The game would end in a draw. Let's move on. Number eight, we have another pretty well-known player called Garry Kasparov. He's played a lot of World Championship matches, most of them against Anatoly Karpov. This is one example from the year 1987 and one of the very rare tactical mistakes we see from Garry Kasparov. In this position, after rook to c6, he decided to go for rook 7 to f3, starting a combination. Unfortunately, this combination loses a rook and the game though. Pawn takes, rook takes, and Kasparov had beautiful lines of mind like queen e2, rook takes h3, king g2, rook g3, and then d3 next move with a lot of play for black. But this would not happen. Instead, white has the move rook c7 check, king h8, and here the point bishop to h6. Tough move to spot, 
but winning, distracting the queen. And if the queen doesn't really have anywhere to go, queen f6 runs into bishop to g7 check. So the queen has to lose contact with its rook, uh, either move or as in the game, rook takes d3, bishop takes f8 with a winning ending for white. This does not qualify as such a big blunder because the refutation is pretty difficult to spot. It still is a blunder and cost Kasparov the game and earned him the number 8 spot in this list of ours. Let's move on to number 7. Let's stay in relatively modern times. This is the year 2006. The players are wrestling to Palov against Vladimir Kramnik, a match that became pretty famous or infamous because of some incidents. A lot of tension between the players, the so-called toilet gate. No love lost between those two. And also on the chessboard there were some bitter battles. This is the biggest mistake that featured. Topalov with white has built up quite an attack. Went on to play g takes f8 queen here. And Kramnik went bishop takes f8, which is the first part. It's really a blunder by both sides. Bishop takes f8 is a mistake. He should have gone king takes f8. The reason for bishop f takes f8 being a mistake is the move rook takes g4, which did not happen in the game. So this is the second part of the mistake. Rook takes g4, bishop g7, and queen to c7. That's all she wrote. There's mate coming on g7. Black has one spy check, queen f1 check, knight to g1. And queen takes g7 mate cannot be stopped anymore. Reasonably straightforward win for Vesely into Palov, which he missed. And instead he went queen g6 check, bishop g7, f5, when the game remained completely unclear and was, as we can see, by the result. Kramnik went on to win that game and the match in the end. So a serious, serious blunder by both Kramnik allowing this and by Topalov not going for it. Then, which position are we at? Number five? I can't count. Number six? Let's call it number six. Another classic. This is our friend Alexander Ayechin once again against Yefim Bogolyubov. In their, I believe, 1929 match, a match Ayechim went on to dominate and win. But he did not have to win this very game. It's maybe not that big a blunder or it's not going to seem as such to some viewers. But it's very instructive, so I felt I should include it into this list. Bogolyunov, <laughs> tough name by the way, decided to play king to g4, which is a losing mistake. And after b7, f5, b8, queen, rook takes, rook takes. White was in time to control the black f-pawn and easily win the game with a move king to d5, f3, king to e4, f2, rook f8, king g3, king e3, picking up the pawn. And you can trust Mr. Ayechin that he can mate with rook and king against the king. Instead, after b6, Bogolyubov should have used the technique which nowadays is known as shouldering, playing the move king e4, restricting the white king from moving over to the king side so quickly. And this is just an easy draw. For example, b7, f5, b8, takes, takes, f4. And we can see here the white king does not have access to the pawn and therefore nothing white tries will lead to success. Rook a8 check, king d4 is the most principled, just keeping to block this guy. Rook f8, king back to e4. There's nothing white can do. King c5, f3, followed by king e3, f2, king e2, with an easy draw. Bogoyev. <laughs> can't pronounce the name. I'm so sorry, Mr. Bogol Yubov. You should really have seen that though. King e4. Instructive mistake. Don't do that. Now we're number five. And now we have once again a reasonably recent match between two guys you might have heard of. Garry Kasparov already featured earlier. Still the strongest player of all time in many people's minds. Some say Carlsen, some say Fischer, but he always makes the list still very present, even though he's not playing anymore. Against a guy who's very much still playing, Vichy Anand. This is from their 1995 match, where Anand was the challenger. Goes to show his longevity. Not sure I'm pronouncing that word right. Anyway, he played a match against Kasparov 1995, took the lead, but then went on to lose. And this game is one reason why, after rook c4, Anand spotted a chance to win material, or so he thought. Went for the move knight to b6. Unfortunately, that's a losing move. 
instead you should have played something calm like c3 is accurate, rook d5, bishop d5, bishop d5, rook d5, rook takes c3, the quiet move rook e2, covering c2, followed by rook takes b5 with equality and a very likely draw. So he went knight b6, probably thinking he had tricked Kasparov, rook takes b4 check, king to a3, and counting on this double attack we see here, but he missed the following move, which would win the game for black. Rook takes c2. Nice little tactic, but not that hard to see. So this qualifies as a blunder and earns Anand. Number five on this list. Rook takes c2, rook b3 check, king a2, only move. And rook e3 check with a discover check and an attack on the rook on e1, deciding the game. Black remains two pawns up with a winning position, so Anand had to resign and went on to lose that match. Another guy who lost the match is Mr. David Bronstein, or at the very least he did not win, he did not take the world champion title from Michael Botvinnik, and this is a game he went on to lose. The position we see on the board, blunder number four, is a draw, but Bronstein lost it in one move. He went for the move king to c2, which he really should not have played because after king c2, black went king g3, very instructive move once again, and white had to resign because this king will support this pawn queening. There's nothing white can do. Let's say king d3, king f2. The knight is not in time. Black just plays e2, e1 queen and wins. It's not clear what Bronstein missed. Maybe he was banking on king c2, king f3, when there are still chances for white after knight to f7. You can stop this pawn thanks to a timely knight check with knight e5, king f2, let's say, knight to d3 check, and white is all right. But king g3 does not allow any such chances. Knight e6, you just play e2. White has to go king d2, knight d4. Oops, sorry, king f2. And knight d4 is not really in time anymore because of e1 queen. S similar things can be said about knight f7, just e2 and wins. So instead of king c2, Bronson could have made an easy draw by playing knight e6 in this position, bringing the knight to d4, giving his knight for the pawn, and then picking up the remaining black pawns. No problems there. Pretty inexplicable mistake by David Bronstein in that one. We're moving a bit closer to the current day again, and we're coming to number three. We have Viktor Korchnoi. Viktor the Terrible, the tireless fighter, played many a game, and this is from his World Championship match against Anatoly Karpov in the year 1978, which Karpov went on to win. And this is a game Korchnoi blundered away with white here by playing the move rook to a1 after rook c6. Rook c6 threatens rook c1 checkmate, so rook a1 might look natural, but it has a small problem. The small problem is that it runs into knight f3 check and it's mate in two more moves. g takes f, rook g6, king h1, knight f2 checkmate. Instead of rook a1, which lost the game instantly, he should have played g3 or g4, both leading to an equal position. After knight f3 check, it's easiest to just take on f3, but it's also very possible to play king g2, and the game should have ended in a draw. Instead, rook a1, it did end in a very quick checkmate, earning Korchnoi number three spot on our blunders list. Number two, and this brings us very much to the present day. I might have some recency bias here, but I do still think this is a very shocking blunder at this level. The move king to d2, played by Magnus Carlsen in their 2014 match against Vichyana, game six. What is so shocking about this is not only that it turns a winning position into a losing position by allowing a reasonably simple tactic. The move knight takes e5 wins the game. Rook takes g8, knight takes c4 check, King d3, knight b2 check, escaping the, ex the white king. The king has to go somewhere, king e2, rook takes g8, black is two pawns up with good technique. Anand should convert this and win a position where he was struggling just some moves ago. But instead of 
taking his chance and leading the match, should he have won this, the score was tied at 2.5 before it, Anand played the move a4, missing it, and after king e2 he would not get a second chance and went on to lose that game. I find this very shocking, not only as I said because the tactic is not that hard to spot, but also because it turns a winning position into a losing position, while most of the other examples we've seen turn a drawing position into a losing position or along those lines. So number two of the biggest blunder in world championship history I believe the award should be shared between Carlsen and Anand. Carlsen for playing King D2 and Anand for not punishing it. This is 2014. We have to make a little jump in time to get to the number one spot. Not that much. It's number one is the year 1892. This is a match Chigorin against Steinitz. Chigorin very close to a win in this game and I believe a win in this game would have tied the score. Here's a piece up, could just have played rook takes b7 when black can resign or he can try rook takes d5 when knight f4 is a pretty nice little knight fork. So there's not much to do, the key of course being that the h2 pawn is defended by this bishop. Instead Chigorin embarked on the move bishop b4 which looks nice but has a small problem that leaves this pawn undefended and therefore allows mate in two moves. Rook takes h2, king g1, rook dg2, checkmate. So bishop b4 turned a totally winning position and equalizing the match score into losing the game instantly, mate in two, and he went on to lose that match. Even though the chess level might have been lower in 1892, this is still a horrific blunder even for those times, should not have happened. And therefore, it earns Mr. Chigorin the number one spot in our list of the 10 biggest blunders of all time. I hope you enjoyed the list. I hope, of course, that you agree with all my assessments and my rankings. If you think I missed some examples, which is very possible, or if you disagree with the rankings, feel free to let us know, post them in the comments, write us, come up with more blunders. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.